Uh, my name is Ilan from Kyber Networks. Uh, I will be giving this talk with uh, Shane. Uh, we will describe the Kyber DAO experiments we ran so far. And we decided to give this talk uh, two topics. Uh, one is blurring the lines. We refer to the lines between Kyber as a company and the community or the customers. And the second one is turning this satisfaction into action. Uh, maybe some of you can guess what we mean, but we'll try to explain later if not. Um, so let me start by saying a few words about Kyber. Uh, this is a successful ICO from 2017. It, it's a swap service or a DEX. Uh, we are live on main chain on uh, mainnet from January uh, last year, integrating dApps and uh, enabling uh, any user to pay with the token of his choice in any DAP. This was the main uh, original uh, view. It's about 50 uh, employees in Israel, in uh, Singapore, headquarters, and Vietnam. So you can see our starting point for a DAO is rather different than other people who are presented here, and we describe our journey. So in this talk, uh, we will talk about uh, why DAO at all for us, for Kyber, established company. Uh, the Kyber DAO experiments we have been running so far, it's two experiments. The lessons we learned, uh, the outcomes, we will try to describe our understanding of what is the DAO dynamics or understanding the DAO creature because it's a very different creature than we met so far. Um, and points we think are in, in interesting to explore uh, around the DAO. So the first experiment, uh, oh, <laughs> first we see our community as why DAO? So we have a community, KNC holders and uh, our users or customers, uh, and we wanted to have a way to better integrate our community into our activity. So the main, the final goal or the long-term goal is uh, decentralizing Kyber service. Uh, this was also on the white paper, and we tried to achieve it. Uh, so we want to build, actually for doing this, we first need to build the community, enable the community which is active, which is uh, reliable, and which can act as a DAO for doing what we do now. Uh, we wanted the DAO later on to be able to take the protocol level decisions. For the midterm, what we set as goals is we wanted to have a KNC treasury and let the people act as a DAO and this way can establish the community and establish this line of communication with our community. Uh, so we had a role to understand our community, understand the needs, and understand all the ideas and the platforms around the DAO. <laughs> around the DAO. Uh, so experiment number one. Uh, first, we tried with Aragon. I guess any, everybody here knows Aragon. Um, actually, we only set up a simple DAO. We put uh, one question on, in the DAO and we asked any KNC holder to vote. So we asked, should Kyber set up a community grant in KNC to be governed by the DAO? Uh, there's a few thousand KNC holders and we waited for everyone to vote, of course. And as you might guess, this was not the case. Uh, we didn't put any funds, we just asked them to answer yes or no on this uh, question. So after a few weeks of running, we had uh, 60 voters. Uh, which we, we thought was a low turnout. But as I guess might have you, any, many of you know, this is what's happening in the DAOs, uh, for many DAOs around, and this benchmark is quite fair. Uh, but we still try to understand how can we create more activity. So then we were looking around, understanding what would be the next step for building a DAO and the, building the community towards the final goal of the DAO. Uh, we met DAOStack. DAOStack offered for us a very extreme solution. They told us, okay, you should open the DAO and give it full power. I mean, in DAOStack, as you might know, there is no curation process. Uh, the DAO can decide anything and the grants can go anywhere. So you, you, we as Kyber had no special power in the DAO and we just had to trust the DAO. It took us quite a while, right, Chain? <laughs> Because we said, okay, how can we trust this group of people? We have no idea who they are. 
Uh, but after many talks with DAO stack people, uh, they, they convinced us it's okay and we can do that. So we jumped in the deep waters for us and started the DAO. We uh, added some funds. It was 17,000 KNC. It's the Kyber token. At the time, it was 4,500 now dollars. Now I think it's a bit less. Uh, and anyone in the DAO can ask any grant for anything. It could be bad, it could be good. We have no control over. So a bit worried, we start this experiment. And uh, one major decision we took was how should we distribute the voting power for the DAO participants, the DAO members. Uh, we saw our community, the main power should go to KNC holders, which we saw as the most important part of the community. So we did distribution around this, but we made sure that smallholders should relatively have high enough power uh, in relation to the large holders. So large holders can't go and uh, sweep a vote with one address, like we saw happen in, in Argon DAO, if someone knows that. Uh, so the difference between small and large holders would rather uh, not too big. Uh, we gave minimum guidelines. We gave some, uh, we did reach out with Medium, uh, Twitter, and read it, and we started running. Uh, this is a small screenshot. I, I, I already shared some. This is the history of proposals. And now I want to talk more about the proposals, which were the fascinating part that happened in this now. So it's two months now running. Still 2,000 KNC left, but it seems the community is a bit tired. Uh, there were 51 proposals. Uh, 20, 12 passing proposals uh, that received like 15,000 KNC. Uh, the highest proposal was 3,000 KNC, was, it's around $600. And not only that, I mean, on, besides the proposals, this DAO gave Kyber a lot of uh, media activity. Uh, we had a very active TG group with 170 participants. There were uh, 25 active users, give or take, at certain times it's changed, and more than 2,000 messages. Other than that, Discord channel and Twitter impressions. And it was also nice to see that Kyber got exposure in external media. In Hacker Noon, you can see Kyber in an article trying to explain what is a DAO. And we also, it was a bit funny for us, we found Kyber in Circle Research here in the middle, uh, side by side with Aragon, uh, MakerDAO, and DAOstack. So we were very surprised to see this happen, and it was uh, nice. So, but now let me go to the proposals, which is the most interesting part and surprising part for us. Uh, I will start by saying the experiment was extremely success successful from our, our point of view, and I think the proposals will explain why. So this first guy uh, is Felix from Cloud Bureau. Uh, he created the Java tutorial for uh, integrating Kyber. Until then, we only had uh, Node.js tutorial. So he, he thought it was missing. He, maybe he was thinking, hey, Kyber, don't do this. Why don't they deliver? And here in the DAO, we gave him opportunity. He took the money, and he did the tutorial. Uh, Kyber ambassador. I think this is the classic uh, use case for DAOs. A guy from the States, Jacob, uh, Kyber has no representation, representation <laughs> sorry, in the United States. So for us to reach events in the United States, it's very hard. Long flights take a lot of money, a lot of effort and resources. And Jacob from the States offered to be a Kyber ambassador and to promote Kyber in a local event. Uh, Kyber ambassador, I thought this was a wonderful use case for a DAO. If it we would want to do that in a normal uh, situation. I don't know how it would have gone through. So he has to approach us. We have to uh, say, okay, you can do it, you can be. But here, the DAO, it was very easy. He persuaded the community, and bam, he got the money, and he's an ambassador in a local event in the States. Kyber Meme Factory, uh, so another proposal, 2000 KNC. Uh, someone offered KNC for anyone creating a nice meme. And here are a few examples of memes created uh, in this meme factory. Uh, T-shirt design contest. Again, uh, we were surprised. There was very humorous and nice ideas we didn't, couldn't have thought of by ourselves. Again, this is a community initiative. 
Salman took 2000 KNC, he offered few prizes, and people uh, delivered uh, t-shirts. And now let me pass the stage to Shane and talking about Just our lessons. Thank you, Ilan. Thanks, Ilan. Hi, everyone. My name is Shane. Uh, I do marketing for Kyber Network. So just to have a quick follow-up uh, from what Ilan had already described in detail about our experiments with Aragon and uh, with DAOStack, I'm going to share with you from a community management and, and uh, marketing perspective some of the lessons that we have learned uh, conducting uh, these experiments. So as mentioned earlier, with Aragon, it was a really straightforward, uh, simple UI, UX process, just a one uh, question, yes, no poll. And subsequently with DAOStack, we also uh, invested considerable resources to educate our community, spread awareness about it, uh, and to yeah, generate hype about our DAO activity. But despite uh, you know, finding really good tools and, and, and platforms like Aragon DAOStack, and uh, also to generate uh, a lot of awareness about our DAO experiment. We only had, um, you know, uh, uh, I mean, it's to, to be honest, it's actually a decent amount, 60 voters and over 50 proposals uh, on DAO stack, but we feel that there's room for improvement for sure. And uh, one idea that I'm really interested in uh, while building the community around the DAO is how to increase voter participation. So what we realized is that having just uh, a really good mechanism, a platform or tool for the DAO, uh, and, and generating awareness and having a good UI UX is not sufficient, right? It, there, there needs to be, that's only half the battle won. Um, the community is the heart and soul of the DAO, and there needs to be uh, a way for us to actually understand uh, the community at a very deep level, their concerns, uh, the, the issues that they are interested in, and what do they want to see uh, in the Kyber DAO. Every community is different. Uh, we can't use, for example, uh, the, the same cookie cutter template from uh, a, a, DAO, a, a DAO, in DAO on Alchemy or a DAO on Aragon and deploy it on Kyber because each of these communities will have different characteristics, personalities. Uh, even you know, within Germany, uh, like Berlin, Hamburg, Munich, different cities have their own quirks uh, and eccentricities. So same for the DAO. Right? Like we need to understand how, uh, the Kyber community for ourselves, right? uh, you know, how they think and what the issues they uh, are concerned about. So the way we did it is actually to create a dedicated Telegram channel. And uh, we have the privilege of some of the thought leaders from the space. For example, uh, Martin from DAOSEC, Pat from DAOSEC. Uh, we have people from Aragon as well, Digix Maker. Uh, interesting, we also had Ed Mankata from Blockfolio. Uh, he used to be part of the Dash, one of the earlier uh, forms of uh, 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 arguably like decentralized governance, right? Where they tried to actually uh, pay freelancers uh, through the DAO that they have. So we really appreciate all this advice and insights that they gave us because we were new to the DAO space. And we learned a lot from them. So this is just a summary of some of the key points and issues that we uh, you know, realize that keep being raised by our community. I'm not going to go through them uh, one by one because I think some of you guys are already very familiar with this. And there were talks earlier that talked about this. But the point I'm trying to make is that it's important when considering how you design a decentralized governance uh, framework to consider these topics and, and what are the issues the community are concerned about. And uh, yesterday I was at Web3 with Ilan. Uh, there was a panel on DAOs as well uh, with Maker, Digix, Democracy, Earth, uh, and Aragon, I think, yeah, and, uh, and Moloch DAO as well. And they, uh, a majority of the panelists, I would say, um, suggested having a forum to you know, facilitate discussions regards to governance regards to some of these topics here. So that is something moving forward, what Kyber uh, will do as well for our next experiment. So moving from experiment one, which was just a simple yes, no poll, to uh, our experiment on DAO stack, it, it was a huge jump, like Ilan said, into the deep waters. So having a much more complex uh, governance system also introduced a host of new challenges. Uh, and one of them, and, uh, which was the second lesson that we learned about our experiments, is that DAO dynamics 
uh, is, really, is a really you know, a, a, a complicated issue. So we found that you know, conflict is inevitable. Uh, an example here I would like to share is how one user actually uh, accused another user of, um, uh, of his proposal being like, not worth the amount of funds being requested. Like, um, yeah, the quality of work required probably do not, it's not commensurate to the amount of funds that he was uh, requesting for. So the user you know, uh, fought for his right to get his proposal voted in. And he actually uh, um, commented on our Telegram channel, even on t over Twitter, uh, and to argue and to debate about it. So not saying who's right or wrong, but in general, uh, when you think about designing uh, a governance system for your community, you have to be prepared that DAO Dynamics uh, is, is, is something that is really, um, yeah, dynamic, right? And, and there's gonna be different people from different walks of life in your community, and you have to be uh, prepared for that. So what we are trying to do is coming up with a manifesto for our KyberDAO. So this uh, sounds fancy, but basically it's a summary of uh, key guidelines and rules, ground rules, that should be um, abide by uh, w when, when discussing about um, our, I mean, discussing about proposals or you know, um, trying to persuade people to vote for your proposal in the Kyber DAO. And yeah, I think this is one key lesson that we learned and um, we weren't prepared for in our experiment too, but it was really interesting to see some of these arguments happening uh, in the DAO. But it's not all negatives. There's also a lot of positives that we saw in our experiment. For example, uh, where one of our community members, uh, his proposal got passed right, for creating some handheld gadgets to track uh, crypto tokens, uh, the prices of crypto tokens. But he realized that uh, due to you know, the market swings, that the amount of funds that he, he, he received were not sufficient to actually produce uh, these gadgets. And another community member actually offered to use his 3D printer and uh, to print and, and, and to subsidize some of the costs for him. So it's really nice to see how, just like in real life, you know, there could be a lot of tension, a lot of conflict. Uh, on the flip side, there's also a lot of good that come out from these discussions and from this community uh, building. And um, one thing that I like to do is when I see such uh, positive examples of community members helping each other to actually reach out to them directly uh, and to you know, uh, uh, show my appreciation. Uh, and, and thank them for it and maybe send them some swag if they are really active supporters. So what I realize is effective in building community is uh, you know, positive reinforcement. So uh, as opposed to you know, hiring a freelancer, so I, I'm in a marketing department, right? So um, sometimes we, we consider, let's say, uh, some kind of graphic change for our website or for our marketing campaigns, we consider hiring like uh, outsourcing with two other outside agencies or freelancers. So as opposed to you know, um, compensating them uh, with, with fiat and uh, hope they do a good job, and obviously you know, for, as a client, to, to satisfy their clients, they would do it. But as opposed to doing that, if our community members, uh, or these agencies or these freelancers are part of our community, uh, when they actually submit a proposal and um, hope to get votes, to get it passed and execute upon it, there's a greater sense of ownership because there's validation from the rest of the DAO. Uh, it's not just a, a contract, right? It's not just a, a financial contract that they're doing and that they have to ob uh, oblige based on the terms of the contract, but they actually go you know, above and beyond um, what was required of them to get feedback from the rest of the community and find out ways, and in fact, uh, reaching out to the team itself to, to find out ways of how they can uh, better their proposal. So yeah, that's a really uh, positive and encouraging thing that we saw. So uh, our third lessons from our DAO experiments uh, that I want to leave you with is what, uh, from our perspective, uh, it really helps to actually unite the community into a co cohesive unit. We are, we are not there yet, but this uh, kind of tree uh, elements that we felt um, we should you know, try to uh, work on in our next experiment. So first is a love or passion for the same goals and objectives. So there are a lot of noise out there, right? There are a lot of disagreements with many aspects of a DAO, uh, uh, of a DAO's design. And 
Um, what we want to do is really to try to remove as much of noise as possible and narrow it down to, uh, to focus on what are the key things that people actually uh, are interested in and agree on. So if we are able to find what are the, 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 the passions right, of our community uh, with regards to a certain proposal or regards to a topic, uh, it's much easier to get a support. So an example could be you know, your favorite football team. Uh, you know, I, I love soccer and for some of you who play sports, there are a lot of different teams. In Berlin, there's uh, FC Berlin and HSC Berlin, if I'm not wrong. So if you're supporters of these clubs, right, there's a sense of uh, euphoria and community spirit when you go to uh, watch a game uh, or when you, know, you see a report about your team on the news uh, in the media. So we want to kind of cultivate that kind of community spirit and passion about the DAO and about Kyber Network, of course, uh, over time as well. And second is having a common adversary. So uh, I, I'm not sure if some of you guys uh, have played certain games like World of Warcraft before, or Dota, or League of Legends. So when you know, there's another team that challenges you, or there's another guild right, uh, that is, is doing better than you, uh, sometimes your, your friends just call you in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. Like to hey, you know, hop on your computer to, to, to do something about it. And yeah, sometimes uh, back then when I, when I still have time to do this, uh, I, I, I'll be happily you know, getting out of bed just to join my friends to do it. So that, that stems from uh, a, a single fo focus to try to um, yeah, like fight against a common adversary. And same for soccer, right? Like if you're, there's a derby uh, in your hometown, um, yeah, like you and your friends would be really like, agitated uh, if you lose. So in Kyber's context, what is this common adversary? Uh, I think some of you know the colloquial term FUD, right? Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Uh, but to put it in a more serious note, it's like misinform misinformation, fake news, or in general, just people who um, like they, they have a lack of education in terms of what your project is about. This may not pertain to Kyber, it could be any project. So to get your community and rally your community against this common adversary, and uh, it helps to you know, build uh, the community spirit as well and encourage them to, instead of focusing on the flaws, uh, the existing flaws of your project uh, and just being dissatisfied about it, but actually taking up the mental to propose ideas to actually help your project. Uh, and I think Ilan mentioned a little bit earlier is to turn our dissatisfaction with whatever we feel uh, is not right at the moment uh, into action and to be even incentivized and rewarded uh, in the process. So this brings me to the next uh, last point that I felt that can really help bring the community together, uh, monetary or financial incentives. So like on Dowstack, right, we have uh, the predictors network that actually use gen tokens, uh, I mean stake gen tokens to predict on the outcome of a certain proposal. So financial incentives in that way uh, actually help boost and help uh, uh, highlight proposals that could, you know, are contentious and could uh, also be really beneficial for the project itself. And for Kybis, uh, uh case for experiment two, where people actually, like Felix from Cloud Bureau, who actually wrote a Java tutorial, uh, he gets incentivized to do something good for the Kyber community as well. So when such financial incentives are in place and they are uh, aligned with everyone, then there's a better chance that you know, people are more willing to support you uh, when, you know, when you have a, yeah, a new initiative that's coming up. So, yeah. To wrap this part up on lessons, uh, I just want to reiterate that uh, in order to build a really strong community, you've got to understand them really deeply. You've got to be prepared for interesting uh, DAO dynamics within your, your community members, and you have to find ways to rally them. Uh, those that I suggested earlier are just uh, you know, examples, true passion of the same objectives, true um, um, a common adversary, and, and having you know, financial incentives. But, you guys might have you know, more ideas that you feel free to share with me after. And lastly, I uh, just want to end off that building the DAO it's a, a, and a community for the DAO is it's, it's not an easy process. It takes time. Uh, but 
always in the back of mind to always like educate, uh, engage the community, and to think about how you can empower them uh, so that they can turn their dissatisfaction into action. So now I'll pass the time on to Ilan, who will wrap up this uh, presentation. Thank you, Shane. So we have a tired crowd, <laughs> a small tired crowd. I still try to share some of our insights from this uh, experiment. Uh, first, a few points that we feel are, could help a lot when running a DAO uh, for more exploration. Uh, smart funding in DAO stack, you either say yes or no to the proposal. Uh, we feel it's much better if someone could say the amount is, I say yes, but the amount is different. So maybe it's less, maybe it's more. And also, when can I pay? In DAO stack, we pay when the proposal is passed, but you don't know if it will get executed. So it's hard, and especially when there's a large fund, like a few thousand dollars, you would think, okay, I can pay and he can do any, nothing. So I, don't, I want to pay only when he executes or parts. So smart funding is missing. Uh, communication tools that help orientation. Now we have a TG group. As you might know, TG groups, you close the phone for two days, you open it up, 300 messages, and you say, hey, what the hell, I'm just gonna skip down. Uh, it's hard to get orientation, what is happening. Many times there is side talks that are going to some direction, and a filtering tool or some kind of Slack type tool where you can ch choose a room and get a room and talk about your thing and go back to the group when you're ready. Uh, so better arrangement of the communication can help a lot. Uh, this was a few of them. Uh, more than that, we were thinking we would like a signaling tool. So if I'm interested in a DAO only for a specific thing, in Kyber's uh, case, maybe only for token listing, I want to get signaled every time there's a proposal that's related to my interest point. And this way I can be engaged only in the stuff I am interested in and I don't, I don't have to follow so many groups. So a smart signaling tools or bots can help here a lot. And DAO dynamics, of course, is a big uh, issue. Supportive atmosphere helps the community give good ideas. And if you don't have it, no one will suggest anything. Uh, and actually, DAO requires a cultural change for anyone. It's not only the tools in the DAO. We have to change to enable ourselves to, okay, to do it. So the summary for us, we chose a few sentences. Some are clear. Empowering the community. This is what the DAO does. Uh, trusting your DAO, and thank you DAO stuff for this point. We trusted the DAO and it worked. We gave it power and it did good things for Kyber. Uh, turning this satisfaction into action, we talked about it. Uh, funding solutions where did you didn't know you have a problem. Also, interesting aspect of happens in the DAO. Uh, express your passion using gen, gen tokens for, for DAO stack. Uh, community as business partner, Shane already talked about it. Uh, for me, the major point was uh, blurring the lines. When we started the DAO, we had two entities. It, one side was Kyber Network, the other side was Kyber Community or customers. And we feel uh, the traditional relationship is your customer is always right. It's you here, your customer is there, and he's right, and it's, at times becomes very annoying and you don't know how to react. But here, uh, actually what happened is the third entity joined forces. It's the passionate customers of Kyber who became a third entity that dro drove Kyber forward. Uh, part of this entity is Kyber employees, part of it is the community, which joined forces and did things that wouldn't have happened without this DAO. So this is my feeling, uh, shows the best way what happened here in the experiment. Later on, we see this DAO is growing, so we can join forces with a larger part of community and the larger part of Kyber to enable uh, better Kyber, uh, we hope. Uh, and looking forward, uh, DAO has to evolve with us, the members, like I said. In Kyber, we are looking forward to third experiment number three. In next quarter, any suggestions are welcome, how to run it, and I think that's it. Uh, we have time for questions. One question. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. So I'll be the waiter for today. Uh, you talk Shane all the time. <laughs> hey, uh, so I just want to ask about the role of uh, KNC token in the whole DAO ecosystem. Right now, you are using it uh, within the exchange as a means of uh, uh, fee payment, I guess. That's the main uh, utility. Uh, will it evolve with the DAO further, or how it will be integrated uh, um, on top of uh, the DAO. Thanks. We have a few ideas. Looking forward uh, for the long term, maybe the DAO can control the KNC usage. Right now, it's used for part of it is burned. We burn KNC as uh, it's paid for fee, and part is fee sharing program. So anyone who gives us a, a traction gets part of the fees. But Looking forward, we, we, we will not decide about this. We hope the DAO someday can decide what happens with the KNC. Um, do you have people like st stewarding the the DAO, like you have in the Genesis DAO? Like, do you have like employees of Kyber or like sort of staff or contractual? Uh, so, like, I think Genesis DAO had uh, something like an ATF group, right? Before uh, that was trying to champion, uh, getting, making sure the proposals are executed and stuff. And I think Felipe was was helping out with that before or something. Oh. Ah, okay. Yeah, but so to answer your question, we, the, the Kyber team is bootstrapping kind of the community management. So myself and Ilan, we, we have a Telegram group. It's, it's uh, not that big now uh, because we try to keep the discussion tight with a smaller group. But uh, for Experiment 3, we're actually opening it up to the public. Uh, so yeah, people like yourself, uh, we'll put, put up a link there and you can join and yeah, feel free to participate in discussions. So um, yeah, right now the Kyber team is managing this community, uh, the, the community. But in future, we hope that let's say somebody uh, do a proposal on Alchemy about creating some kind of uh, community group to uh, enforce, you know, uh, proposal execution. Yeah, why not? We will be really happy to fund that as well. Yeah, right now we already have one community group called Kyber Squad. Uh, apart from this guy called Jacob, the rest are anonymous. So um, yeah, it's interesting to see that even take place even in an on an experiment level. Thank you.